Welcome to the 2016 NVIDIA Emerging Companies Summit in India, the first time in India. This exceptional platform allows GPU-based Indian startups an opportunity to partner with NVIDIA, showcase their technology, and accelerate their growth. We have put together a fantastic evening for you. We have the startups, the entrepreneurs. We have NVIDIA business leaders. We have other business leaders and venture capitalists and investors. Very quickly um, about uh, NVIDIA ECS. It's a part of the GPU Technology Conference, GTC. It's the largest event of the year for GPU developers. GTC's presence spans across United States, Europe, China, Taiwan, Australia, Japan, Korea, and now India. So 12 Indian startups today are going to be pitching to the audience, to the jury, out of which we will have two winners who have some amazing prizes to be won. These 12 startups came through a very rigorous process with the focus on artificial intelligence and deep learning and are enhancing the human productivity and the intelligence. To kick off what I'm sure is going to be a fantastic evening for all of us, I'd like to now invite uh, Vishal Dhupar to come and welcome us and the jury. If I was to tell you that all of us are advocates of computing, we also do realize that our industry actually makes some massive technological changes, and each time there's a new technological change, our lives change around that. NVIDIA, through its journey of 20 years, by solving problems in visual computing, is today pivoted around artificial intelligence. And it was for this reason we believe that when we look at artificial intelligence, we got to be part of the grain right from the beginning. I looked at India, and I said, there's a different India here today. Here's India where the brightest minds are staying back in the country. These brightest minds have great ideas, and they're ensuring those ideas get converted into business propositions. As these ideas get converted into business propositions, there's going to be a disruptive way of doing business. I looked around and I saw that across the world, we were doing Emerging Company Summit, and we were trying to identify which is that breakaway idea, and said, what do we do for India? I had a choice that I could have gone and looked at really big companies, I could have looked at smaller companies, or I could have really looked at companies which are yet to get a platform to showcase the technology. And therefore, we decided that why don't we create a platform where not only people with ideas come together, but those who can be motivated, those who can come together, and we can ensure that together we can rise. So today is a get together of the brightest minds together and ensuring that we have a lot of networking and we can then progress our ideas into reality. I do know that right from the time you guys have entered, you've been very keen to meet a very special person in this room. That is Rajan Anandan. So any further ado, may I invite Rajan onto the stage. So let me start by saying this. Look, um, it, it's an extraordinary time to be starting up uh, in India uh, for many different reasons, right? Uh, I think, one, we have an early but pretty vibrant ecosystem. Second, we have an unprecedented number of internet users in India, 350 million internet users, over 200 million on smartphones, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have some interesting accelerators like demonetization. There is no cash. If you're a fintech startup in India, it just entirely changed like two weeks ago because nobody has any money to pay. So what are you, you going to do? You're going to have to pay through financial instruments. So I think the consumer market is very, very interesting. But I think the second set of opportunities really is India-specific spe India problems, right? Um, you know, so far, some of you may have uh, sort of heard me speak about this. But over the last, I'd say, seven, eight years, we've actually gone out and created as a nation many very interesting consumer tech companies. But with maybe two exceptions, all of them have focused on the what I call India One, which is the first 100 million Indians. The first 100 million Indians, by the way, they kind of look and feel like all you know, sophisticated internet users in the, in the West. You know, their GDP per capita is obviously substantially lower, but fundamentally they have the same set of needs. They have a fair bit of disposable income. They're connected. They're all on connected every day on smartphones. They get on the internet 165 times a day, and then pretty much any model that worked in 
in advanced internet market, we'll work for them, and guess what? They've been wildly successful. But actually, see, big businesses get built when there are big unmet needs. And India, as all of us know, has many unmet needs, but they're actually not in the first 100 million users. Right? If you look at most of India, we have so many unmet needs. And they go all the way from agriculture. 50 million agricultural households in India, living large number of them living on sustainable income levels, very small land holdings, no technology. Ag tech, you know, so agriculture, huge problems, huge population, huge unmet needs. Exact same thing you can say about education, about healthcare, about energy, about transport, and so on and so forth, right? So, and as I think about the domestic set of opportunities, they won't be, by the way, they won't be only deep learning companies, right? They won't be deep learning with GPU companies. They will actually be full stack companies. What do, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is they are end-to-end -end solutions that have technology at the core, but you also have to provide a service. So, so as I think about the opportunity that we have for the kinds of companies that you know, many of you are trying to build, they're enormous, and we're just getting started. It's like very, very early in the game. So the last thing I'll say in terms of opportunity sets is when you're trying to build a business from India, it doesn't matter where you're in, right? Most important thing is what is your competitive advantage and is there a nation's competitive advantage? But I think I'd encourage all of you to ask yourselves, what is your real competitive advantage? And over time, how is your comp competitive advantage going to get better and better? Thank you. So moving on to the next piece, um, we have the 12 startup pitches coming up, right? The main show of the, event, uh, of the evening. I'd like to call on stage the first startup, Recipe Book or Agrima Infotech. We create a Food Vision API, so we are expert in recognizing food items. So uh, we are an app called Recipe Book. Recipe Book is an intelligent recipe discovery app where you open up your fridge and take an image of ingredients. The app will tell you what all recipes you could make out of that. Uh, maybe you could share with us how you monetize this idea. So it's basically through uh, selling of APS. Uh, so it's, it's an API model where we get money from uh, enterprise companies for using our APS. What, what other uh, applications can this platform uh, enable? Uh, in the technology, it's, it's, it's about data, like the, the data you feed in. The same tech can be used in a completely distinct field with you have a different set of data. For example, the same tech can be used in healthcare for identifying skin diseases. Like, uh, uh, it's all about data. If you change the data with those images, you can do that. So it can be taken into multiple sectors. The next one, all, uh, all go vision. I now invite Ashwin to come up and explain how to track VIPs. Our product is an intelligent video surveillance solution, wherein we bring in uh, solutions like traffic intelligence, like the number plate recognition, red light violation detection, uh, or speeding detection, or illegal parking, or wrong parking, right? So, or we bring in crowd management, where we see if there is an increase in crowd strength. We'll be able to measure uh, that there's an increase in crowd strength and control that as well. And we build in uh, facial recognition systems, where it can be installed in uh, city surveillance, where uh, we can recognize multiple people in terms of like blacklisted people, or VIPs are missing people. The uh, performance measurements that uh, you had shown over there, the quantitative, is that, uh, how much of it is that due to the hardware that you're using, and how much of it is due to the algorithms that you are uh, created? Uh, hardware has greatly helped, okay, so you can say that 78x is due, due to the hardware, okay, and the rest of the things is due to the optimization, some of the things that we built, our own algorithms, uh, because we have, you know, background of how to optimize on the hardware. So we built in that, we use that background to actually make it very cost effective in this project. I would like to understand um, how you sell to, because you are, you know, targeting cities, transport stations, you know, buildings. So there are many different customers, different places. How do you, you know, sell to those guys? So uh, this is uh, actually a channel partner model. So we have channel partners in terms of distributors and uh, system integrators. So the system integrators are the ones who actually uh, do the smart cities like Honeywell, LNT, Wipro, and they are the guys who buy from us. Next, we have Artifacia. 
Artificia helps fashion brands and retailers create beautiful product discovery experiences for their customers. We work with fashion brands and retailers to help them build unique product discovery experiences for their consumers with a unique visual first approach. So uh, we, we, we rely on image recognition to uh, solve product discovery instead of relying on text. What exactly do you sell and who specifically do you sell it to? Online retailers, e-commerce companies. And what is it, the thing that you're selling? Product discovery, product recommendations and personalization solutions. Next we have aria.ai, introducing Dikshit from aria.ai. In 2013, November, when we started our journey of entrepreneurs, we wanted to create an assistant actually. So as we, we, we being the researchers, we wanted to create a research assistant to be precise, as we wanted to solve the pain points of it. Who are the customers you are looking for? What kind of expertise do they need? And uh, uh, where do they get their data? Do you provide the data? It's up to them to get the data? So right now, we are trying to deploy the systems into the banks. Right now, our major customers are into the banks. So banks give us the last sets of data where we train upon them and we understand how the, exactly the training process happen because they are the domain experts. We are just like technology persons, they'll give us the data and we try to collaboratively and work with them and create a solution around it. Not only with the banks, we also work with any of the verticals like in the, into the uh, medical sectors, like with the radiologist experts because we have worked with one of the healthcare sector in India itself. How would you describe yourself? There's three choices, <laughs> uh, technology, products or a service company. We are a technology company because we wanted to, we wanted to be an innovative technology company. Being a product company, we, we can be a product company because when we have a technology, proper technology base. Okay, so the next one is Culture Machine. I bring you a fellow Puneite, Amit. Culture Machine is almost two companies in one. One part is a media company which owns and operates multiple media brands and properties like YouTube channels and so on. You've probably heard of uh, Being Indian or Blush. Those are uh, Culture Machine's channels. The other part of Culture Machine is actually a tech company which builds artificial intelligence based software to deliver additional leverage to media in terms of automated content creation that is informed by big data analytics so you know what kind of content to create and you can create it efficiently at scale. Uh, just a couple of tactical questions. You said you did 100,000 videos a month. How yep. long is each video and what resolution are you doing it at? Uh, the duration of the video varies based on genre. So there are, it varies all the way from 30 second shorts, which are ads basically, to about four minutes for music videos to maybe two minutes for uh, sort of a compiled news bulletin. Do you have a direct engagement with the end customer or you go through an advertising agency or their media manager? We have both. I mean, we have agencies as our customers. We have brands as our customers also. For the other model, uh, which is actually the video artifact creation, those tend to be end customers themselves. In the sense, uh, a music label that has a catalog of songs, and they now want to monetize it by creating music videos automatically for those songs. So we actually work with, we have customers in uh, Sony, in UMG, Warner Music. Uh, Dr. Assist is building a cognitive cancer care studio center for precise diagnosis and personalized treatments. Deva, which means God, is here to assist the people. We are trying to develop a smart, intelligent cancer care software that's going to run on the cloud, where cancer care professionals like radiologists and pathologists can access our software. The future version that we are talking about is for the patient and payer, which will be working from the next year. What will happen here is, as of now, we are working with the two hospitals where we take their data, and we are trying to train a system that's going to help doctors in designing the best decision models in terms of coming out with the diagnosis and treatment systems here. Where are you going to get the data from? Because not only are the doctors very few, but the diagnostic equipment is also even fewer. So right. therefore, where are you getting the yeah, data we, from? We are partnering with hospitals and diagnosis centers where do we have asked them to uh, transform this data into PAC system. So this PAC system transformation is being done by them where we are trying to use their data to create the models for us. The next startup is called Edge Networks. Edge Network helps make right person for the right job. So Edge Networks is an HR technologies uh, company that uh, you know, provides a solution that's uh, driven by artificial intelligence and uh, data science in uh, particular. 
for workforce optimization for internal workforces and for talent acquisition. So we provide a unified platform for people supply chain businesses. What skill levels do you offer your service at because the type of questions that you would ask a clerk are different than the type you would ask a sales manager, than you would ask an engineer, et cetera? So uh, we do the strategic hiring for Wipro where a head of procurement, a head of finance, and a head of legal are also hired through our solution. We also do what uh, is a developer or a tester, which is at the base level or the entry level for Wipro. So we have two facets of the solution. So our competence, so can I look at a quant strategist resume and decipher whether they're fit for the job? Yes, I can. Can I look at a Selenium tester's resume and look whether they're fit for the job? Yes, I can. All right, so next we have you. You, simply put, is Google for fashion. We are building a, a single place search and discovery for fashion. So we essentially want to make women shoppers save significant time and, and significant money when it comes to fashion shopping. And uh, we are doing that by uh, giving users absolutely um, any kind of inspiration that they find on the web and any product that they want to search uh, from different fashion commerce portals. Next, we have Maxerians. We look at how people behave in a retail outlet. We look at what products they pick from a shelf and then understand what their interests are. It seems to me for this to work, you have to have cameras in multiple shelves at multiple locations so you have a limited field of view for almost each product. So the question is, who installs and owns those cameras? For this, we need to understand how the retail space works. Actually, if you look at uh, the retail uh, business model, right, the brands sponsor those shelves. Mm -hmm. So for example, Coke pays money to target for a certain space. These days, the brands are actually paying money for dumb shelves. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is adding value by making them become active, charge brands more. The retailers also can be part of the business model, as I've mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever the hand moves in, they can start making more money there. So, yes, there is a limited field of view, so you would have multiple cameras, but the brands are already paying money for that retail estate. Last three startups. Next, we have Cure.ai on a mission to make healthcare more affordable and accessible. We want to automatically diagnose CT scans, X-rays, and MRIs and create a diagnostic report from that. We are working on two things. We are trying to work on identifying normal versus abnormal images, looking at X-rays or CT scans, and also to quantify different volumes, whether like tumor volume or lesion volume. So you know there are um, quite a few companies who are trying to solve this problem in the medical uh, field, right? So how do you distinguish yourself? It's a very vast field. There are many, many diseases. And uh, different people, different companies, for example, I mean, NLA Tech or Zebra Medical, I mean, in the US, they are working on different diseases. They may not be working on the same, same set of diseases that we are working on. And in all the ones that we have worked on, I mean, the nine solutions that we have, we are cutting edge in all of them. We have the best, best in class solution in all of them right now. We have access to much more data because uh, in the US, there is a lot of privacy around sharing data. And we work with many hospitals in India. And we have access to large data sets from these hospitals. Next, we have Tessact. We are into the analytics business, video analytics business. So our target market is media industry. And we are into, we take the video, we take the emotions, actors, objects, and actions out of the video. And uh, we add the contextual ads, uh, con contextual ads on top of it. So uh, you give us any content, and we'll give you the suitable ad for it. So that's what we are into. So currently, we are into compliance business. Uh, cigarettes, alcohols, detecting it and uh, adding the ashtons on it. So uh, yeah, in the, f in the future, we are going to imply the contextual ad thing, the malls, uh, making them all uh, contextual, and yeah, the story builder. We'll build the story out of the video. You give us any video, we'll build a story out of it uh, in the text textual form. From video analytics to incorporating deep learning and pattern recognition techniques to improve the accuracy of detection in video surveillance systems, I bring you Arun from Videonetics. We are a software technology uh, company. Primarily, uh, our software does uh, management of tens and thousands of video cameras installed in various premises. 
to our credit we have 72 airports in this country along with that along with the same video management platform we do video analytics so when you go into an airport from the cub side to the security side you're monitored for intrusion for face recognition for perimeter protection your number plate is picked up and and validated with a database uh, along with that, we have recently, uh, we do three aspects of analytics primarily. One is people, the second is object, and the third is traffic. Our traffic management suite is now uh, much uh, uh, popularly known in the Indian context as uh, intelligent traffic management. Uh, we are entering into the domain of uh, video IoT. IoT is all about sensing and devices with aggregator box. We believe that video is, is the next big uh, big data, so we call ourselves uh, the software portion of the uh, video IRT. Are the Super 12 startups coming out of India in the artificial intelligence and deep learning space. Thanks to NVIDIA for uh, offering this opportunity for these 12 startups. Basically, uh, to find out which of the companies were really innovative uh, in the whole aspect of machine learning and artificial intelligence, as applied to problems and which one of them could go to a commercial production uh, and how much of traction they have got and of course uh, making use of the uh, GPU technology that uh, NVIDIA has produced, uh, how much of it has helped them create uh, and made the problem more uh, tractionable. I think the Indian entrepreneurial system is alive and well. Uh, it uh, certainly bodes uh, well for the future because the, uh, the depth of understanding that these people showed about the business and the solutions that they came up with, uh, especially in uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning, I think it was very impressive. I would like to now call upon Alan TK, who's the group director at NVIDIA. This is our seventh event this year. And uh, most of the time we got the winners in a few minutes. But this time it took us, we had 12 winners, I think, you know, it was more, more difficult to select two. The interesting thing about uh, we shall uh, announce today is this, in, this is an uh, inception for, program. So this is really, you know, something that is very important to NVIDIA is to identify and support uh, all the AI companies and make sure they get all the resources, the tools, the help they need to uh, uh, drive uh, their business and, and run a successful uh, business. We have all, all, already about you know, 400 uh, uh, AI uh, experts here, and uh, you know, we, we need to do much more to, to grow the business in AI in, uh, in India. 12 very interesting companies. It was very long to get it right. And uh, now it's time to talk about the awards. We have 12 winners to start with, so I would like you know, to have the 12 winners you know, on stage. So, we're going to start with the Social Innovation Award, and I would like to call Yap and Vishal to come on stage to give away the awards. For the Social Innovation Award, the winner is QAI. Next one is the best of the show. The best of the best. Edge Network. Great to win the award. I mean, I think we need uh, GPUs. We have, I mean, uh, we started with two GPUs. Now we have around ten, and the more GPUs that we have, the better for us. And uh, definitely, the Microsoft Azure platform is very, very useful in terms of getting uh, compute on the cloud. So, and it's it's a great exposure for us. I mean, being named as this top social innovation uh, company in in India for deep learning. 
that's a that's a great exposure for us. So we are, we are very ha happy about it. You know, we are a data science company. We're sort of building deep learning from here. We're a product company in India. I think just a validation by the jury, and the jury is a fantastic jury. So that really is a reflection of uh, where we are and what we're going to do in the future. So it's great for an Indian company to have this appreciation uh, from a data science and deep learning perspective.